I'm Marissa Norcross. And I'm Dave Freund, and this is The Next Page. Marissa, how are you? I'm, you know, surprisingly, I am great. Given all of what's going on right now, I am feeling pretty good. That is wonderful to hear because I have seen, now I haven't seen more of you. I have heard more from Marissa Norcross in the last <laughs> week than I have since you started working from home. <laughs> you, have, you have facilitated more WebEx meetings. There's got to be like a record for how many WebEx meetings a person can actually facilitate. <laughs> and I'm, you know, it's almost like this voice. I'm waiting for the voice of calmness just before the meeting kicks off. And it's Marissa saying, I have muted your lines. <laughs> and, you, and you say it with such calmness and it's like, oh, so soothing. Well, you know, I've had so, like three years of practice on the podcast, so. <laughs> That's true. That's right. So I think, I think you really need to do like, like I, I kind of teased in our leadership call today. You know, you do your own little radio program here, <laughs> you know. Which is so I, funny I think, because I feel like I am I'm, I'm kind of introverted, but it's I guess I I'm well trained for this. You're you're doing it well because you are you have been trained. Hold on for such a time as this. Oh, nice one! How's that for pulling in the title <laughs> of my weekly post? That was great. So let me just give our listeners just a little background. Um, for such a time of this as this um, is is really a line. Um, it's there is a, a historical account in the Old Testament in the Book of Esther about a queen, Queen Esther, who was a uh, the the Jewish people were being held captive. They were first taken into captivity by the Babylonians, and then different ruling governments took over, conquered one another, and at one point the Persians were ruling the then known world and the. The Jewish people were still in captivity, and Esther was a young Jewish woman who was, um, according to the book of Esther, very beautiful, and she was chosen to be queen of Persia. And while her t as, as she's queen of Persia, um, there is this plot to literally slaughter the Jewish people in captivity, and her uncle hears about it, and he comes to her, Uncle Mordecai comes to her and says, hey, you know, this is what's going to happen, and you need to go to the king and plead the case for the Jewish people, which means, you know, revealing the fact that you're, you're a Jewess, and his decree is to kill the Jews. I realize it might be risking your life, but then he says these, this, these famous words, who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. And, and I think all of us, listening to this podcast, you know, who are in leadership positions, and you wouldn't be listening if you weren't, because that really is the theme as, as you and I meet every week. Um, you have been brought to this time and this place for such a time as this. We are in a crisis, not just in our country, but in the world. And people need hope. They need purpose. And leaders are dealers in hope. So I thought I would, what I would do is, is first I gave my, my readers an idea, a perspective of what that is, where that phrase came from. And then today, I think we need to start on what we need to do as leaders. And I've got some pointers that we'll go through. And then we'll move beyond ourselves to others in the coming next, say, two weeks or so. So the first thing that I want to touch on, you and I talked quite a bit uh, before we hit record, but what are, what are you doing differently to kind of get up for the task, so to speak. I mean, you're, you've lost your ability for your childcare, so your mm -hmm. kids are home. You're balancing your work day with your husband's work day with your mom being able to come. But you shared something that was, that was interesting of how today became a better day. Yeah, so obviously things are different for all of us. Um, but, I, you know, I'm, I'm definitely feeling it my schedule has been turned upside down, just like the rhythms of my home have been turned upside down. Um, and so now that I've realized how, how packed my days have gotten, uh, I used to have a little bit more flexibility that I've lost. Um, so I've, I recently started, I guess, starting my day a little bit earlier. I used to be able to kind of leisurely wake up, spend time with the girls, drink my coffee. Um, and I had 
you know, I could drop Isla off at school, then come home and take my shower and get ready for the day. Uh, but I, I quickly realized that that could no longer work for me. And the days that I tried to do that, I just felt like garbage all day long. So okay. I, I have, I think this morning was like the earliest I've ever, I've been ready in a long time, but just waking up and kind of shifting the order in which I do things so that yep. I, I, I got up, I showered, I was dressed, all completely ready to go to my virtual office. I haven't actually right. gone anywhere in quite a long time um, by like 7.30 in the morning, which is you know normal for a lot of people, but early for me. Um, okay. And I think it's, How- it's really shifted our whole day because I'm ready to go. And so, so you're ready to go. Uh, so it was just like, an, did it just like prepare you emotionally or how did you feel? What made you feel different or what, how did you feel different? You know, I think it, it almost added like a sense of normalcy, which mm. kind of made everything feel a little bit more normal. Um, mm-hmm. Now, you know, I used to be pre coronavirus. I was a part-time employee. Now I'm definitely more like a full-time employee. So you're more uh, than full-time. Yeah, I'm <laughs> more than full-time, but, um, it's kind of made it feel like, okay, I, I am a normal, like working person. I'm a working mom. I work full-time and then I have my evenings with my kids. Um, so it's, it's just added that layer of of normal and like that can't be taken that can't be taken away like right and and so it it helps the day just feels the day just feels more average like okay i'm gonna have my eight o'clock meeting and then i'm gonna have my nine o'clock meeting and i have we have a video call at noon like i'm ready for the i'm ready to be on camera at noon right um right and it's not it's not an issue because it's i'm i'm ready for whatever the world chooses to throw at me today which right. could be anything. <laughs> yeah, and, and I, th- well, I think that is so huge. And I think what you discovered was when you got up and you went through your normal rituals, if I can call it that, mm-hmm. of a normal work day, what it used to be for you before you were part-time, you've probably changed the feeling. That you felt probably better about yourself because oh, for you, sure. you, you were happy with the way you, your appearance was. Mm-hmm. And, and that's the key. You know, one of, one of the things that I forced myself to do um, when I started working at home, and now it's been a week and a half since I've been working out of my office at home, is I didn't change my routine whatsoever. Mm-hmm. I, I mentioned to you earlier that the only difference in my routine in terms of the time when, when my alarm goes off, and I typically wake up before my alarm, but from the time I get out of bed the, to, to go to work, the only difference was instead of getting in my truck to drive to DeWitt, I went downstairs into my office mm-hmm. in our basement at home. That's the only difference is where I went. Mm-hmm. Everything else is the same. And I think for, for people struggling with making this transition to working from home or get back to the routine of getting up, getting showered, getting dressed. You know, I I did share with you, you know, I wear jeans every day rather than Mm -hmm. dress slacks. That's the only difference. Mm -hmm. It maybe would buy me my my appearance with my jeans. But other than that, you know, I'm shaven just like I, you know, those that know what I look like know I don't have to comb my hair. So anyways, it's the same. And when you start off with that stability, you feel better about yourself. Mm -hmm. When you get dressed and you look presentable, you feel better about yourself. You have a greater sense of confidence. And in a time as this, we need all the confidence we can get because there's a lot of things that will take our confidence out. Mm-hmm. So what, the, what I want to talk about today is, is I've actually identified three things that everybody needs to do. If, and, and every one of us is a leader. You know, moms with kids at home, you're a leader. Um, if you're, a, you know, a single person, there's still people you're leading. People, leadership is influence, nothing more, nothing less. And if we are influencing people, we're a leader. So when we get faced with the crisis like we have now, we have to understand that the first thing we have to do is make a shift. And that shift that we need to make is we need to move beyond the the paralyzing fear of, oh my goodness, this is a horrible thing, this everything's going to go wrong, to, hey, wait a minute, there's an opportunity here. Now, if I, and in my post that, that went out this morning, 
I asked if you would define if I would ask you to define a crisis, people would come up with these are typical terms. Actually, if I I, I did a quick Google search on what's a crisis, and these things came up: financial crisis, energy crisis, environmental crisis, health crisis, unemployment crisis, coronavirus crisis, whatever we want to call it. But I found this definition on the Merriam-Webster online that was interesting. It said, an unstable or crucial time or state of affairs in which a decisive change is impending. Now, if you read through that, it sounds terribly ominous. But it doesn't tell us whether it's good or bad. It's funny because you, I did not think it sounded ominous. Really? Okay. For me, it did when I had decisive <laughs> change impending. It was like, whoa, I'm, you know. Mm -hmm. So if that is really what a crisis is, if a crisis is really an unstable or crucial time or state of affairs in which decisive change is impending, we get to decide what the change is. To me, that's we just, just a lot of gonna... words for opportunity. <laughs> exactly. Perfect. Well, you know why that probably is? I'll bet you it's because you got up this morning and you showered and got dressed and put your makeup on and you were mm -hmm. ready to go. Mm -hmm. So you saw this as an opportunity. So you've already made the shift. Yep. If you hadn't made that mental shift, you would have said, oh my goodness, this is impending doom. No, it doesn't say impending doom. It says there's a change that is that is impending mm -hmm. a decisive change is imp something is going to happen and so as a leader we've got to understand that that is going to there is a change and it's it doesn't mean it's good it doesn't mean it's bad it means it's a change so we get to decide this is the shift we need to make mm -hmm. this is going to be something that is positive right i mean it, it, from a I, I definitely tend to lean towards a, a sunny disposition towards things. But, uh, I mean, think about what this will do to, to like, it, obviously it's changed parents' lives because their kids are yes. now home. Right. I, I look at it like, oh my gosh, look at the extra time yes. I'm going to have. And now as the weather is changing, it's like, we're going to be able to spend so much time outside together. We won't have obligations like birthday parties because we can't be within six feet of other people. Right. Uh, we're going to enjoy our time together without having these obligations. Right, right. And so I think when you start really looking for the good, because really there's nothing like, there's nothing, this is happening, right? Like I can, exactly. do, I can do my part. And yep. I, can, I can stay home and I can flatten, help flatten the curve, but mm -hmm. I cannot change the fact that there is a virus rapidly spreading throughout exactly. the world. But what I can do right. is, is find what that change means. Like, like you said, it's, it is, it's a decisive change. Like it's, yeah. it's going to happen. Um, but find ways to make that a, a better to find ways exactly. to, to come out stronger and and exactly be stronger exactly and as soon as you were able to make that mental shift you saw mm -hmm. opportunity mm -hmm. um and i don't know if we talked about this last week because i i did go, didn't go back and listen to the podcast which i should have um but one of the things so you know with my responsibilities with my church the church is empty and we never live streamed a service, a sermon before. Mm -hmm. We did, we released them as podcasts. But last week we decided, you know what? Um, we need a live stream because we need our parishioners to be able to attend a church service. And I don't want the, I don't want to send them somewhere else. I want to have them, I want it to be the, the church that they attend. They mm -hmm. need, they need to see the same familiar surroundings kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, Tim, our technician that, that my son, Tim, that does our, all of our editing, he said, I'll take care of it. And the next thing I knew, he had mounted, he took a webcam that was way in the corner and he put it on a ladder and he set up a YouTube channel and he created all the graphics for the, I mean, it's, it's pretty slick. The, what he did is amazing. Mm -hmm. But he got it set up. And we had more, we have had more people view that sermon. Now I had never, I had never done a sermon in front of an empty church before. It was unique. Um. But we had more people view that than we have attend our, our services on a regular Sunday. Mm -hmm. More than 
probably double. And, and, and he said, and think about it, Dad, it can go anywhere in the world. Mm-hmm. So what was a problem became a positive. My training. So the next part in my post here was, how will this crisis make me better? So as a leader, you got to focus on yourself first. How is this crisis going to make me better? And so I, the example I used here is, as at the time I was writing this, Ma- I'm working from home. Mackney's offices are dark. I train for a living. You know, yeah, I coach too, but I do training and speaking for a living. I can't do that. Well, no, I can't do it the way I did it. And I'm really not good at online content type of things. Well, how can this make me better? It's going to shift me. Once I made the shift mentally to, oh my goodness, how do we keep our revenues up? Because a significant part of Macney's income comes from the work that I do and our other trainers do. Well, I got to get better at something. So it's going to make me better as I learn to facilitate online training programs and and virtual training programs. And what I loved was I, you know, I reached out to one of our trainers that does all of our quality training. 99% of our quality, there's one class that she doesn't do. And I just said, hey, would you be willing to? And I mean, no time flat. Absolutely, I can do that. I just need to change some materials around. Mm -hmm. She's she's willing to do it virtually, which I think is really going to, it's not going to do away with what we used to do, but it is going to, like Randy talked about in one of our leadership calls today, it's actually going to help me because my workload was getting so great that I couldn't get things done, it's now going to allow me to do more with less effort, so to speak, Mm -hmm. because I can reach a lot more people. And how many of these things can we record and have available later on? So what you, as a leader, you need to look at how, ask yourself the question, once you've made the shift that this isn't negative, how will it make me better? And start thinking through that. Mm -hmm. The second point, or the third point that I made in in my notes in my uh, post was how will i use this to this crisis to help others so again we've 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 made the shift how am i growing me how's it going to help others and it's beautiful how that transition happens and the example that i used and and you knew that this was coming up but i was supposed to be in orlando from april 20th to the 25th and and you know how many conversations you and i had with you know two weeks before, three weeks before, two weeks before, you know, COVID-19 is all over the news. And I'm like, man, do I, you know, our listeners know how quick I get an upper respiratory thing. Do I really want to be going to Florida to a conference? And, you know, I was disappointed and yet relieved when about 10 days before I was supposed to fly out of Syracuse, I got an email from Mark Cole that said, yeah, we're, we're postponing the conference till August. Think about a conference that was going to have 3,000 people in it, all the materials printed, all dated. You know, there's because everything, there's dates on everything. I, I think almost every sheet of paper that I can reflect on has a date on it. That's all scrapped now. Mm-hmm. All of the, so not only did they have a loss of revenue, they had to write off a ton of expenses. I'm guessing there were some kind of, deposits that they had you know they they used the the orlando world center uh marriott world center that's a big place gone all the deposits probably gone maybe they'll let them put it down toward the next event i don't know but they decided okay what do we do with this how can we help people and the example that i used was there was there were three john maxwell wrote three specific teachings on leading through a crisis and he did them three days from noon till one, or about one to one thirty. Now they did virtual sessions for the rest of us that really went from morning into evening on on uh, Sunday afternoon, Monday, Tuesday, and into Wednesday. John's teachings, they streamed live on his, on the John Maxwell Facebook page for anybody in the world to watch. Had we only done it in Orlando, 3,000 people, 3,300 people would have seen it. They actually said they had almost a million distinct logins to watch John's TV. Wow. And I, it just blew me away. Mm-hmm. 
And then it, and you know, and they're, now, did they make any money off that? No? Well, maybe, because John was saying, you know, this is part of a conference that I'm doing for my team. If you would like to know more about my team, here, here's how you can mm -hmm. find it out. But that's just called smart business to add that tagline in there at some point. But really, he wanted to get this message on how do you, how do you lead through a crisis out mm -hmm. to the public? And a million people saw it and heard it. And it's still up. If you go to the John Maxwell team Facebook page, it's still there. Yep. You, anybody can watch them. I encourage people. Maybe I'll try to put a link into the, into the show notes um, for that so they can find it. But that's what happens. So, and, and notice the other thing. As soon as you make the shift to looking for positive, you find the positive. Now I make the shift. How is it going to make me better? And now how can I help others? The focus is off me. Mm -hmm. And we feel positive. Yeah. We feel energized. You know, I actually on on uh, Wednesday, might have been Thursday morning. I forgot which morning it was. Because <laughs> um, this, this has been crazy how time has just like blurred. But Mark Cole, who's the president of, of the John Maxwell Enterprises, um, he was talking to us on a live Facebook feed. And he had tears in his eyes. He said, I cannot believe how much impact these few days has been able to have in the lives of people. He's not focused on the crisis anymore. He's completely focused on the opportunity. Mm -hmm. And that's what happens when we can make these three shifts, make the shift, focus on what can, how can I get better? How can I use the crisis to help others? We just completely change our focus and our mindset. And now we're amped up and we're ready to go. Kind of like you were today. I mean, I, you were flying through, all kinds of web crises where WebEx things and the congressman <laughs> couldn't get himself off mute, whatever it was. And other people were taking control of the WebEx. You didn't seem to miss a beat. You were just right there. So I've got a couple more points here I want to try to bring out um, before we're done. Um, here's one. Whatever you feed grows. So these are just notes I took from listening to John's teachings one day. So think about that. If you feed your fear, it's going to grow. If you spend all day listening to cable news, you're going to be needing, you're going to be ready for therapy or something. Mm -hmm. Listen to what you need, shut it off, and then feed your faith. Feed the things that you believe in. You know, find some podcasts that are going to be encouraging for you. You know, um, Look at other people that are, you know, follow people on social media that are achieving great things in a time of crisis. Um, th this was a great one, and I and I forgot, was this Einstein's or somebody in the middle of difficulty lies opportunity? You were going to look that up, and mm -hmm. so think about that. In the middle of the difficulty lies the opportunity. That means I got to get to the middle of the difficulty to find the opportunity. Be courageous. Walk right in. Embrace it and figure out where it is. Now, here's some. These were three things that I thought were, were um, interesting. Um, really, a crisis makes you do things that you wouldn't do unless you had to. So think about that. Um, I, I always love using this example. When my son Jeremy was working in the ICU and he would ask people that, that had smoked for years, do you smoke? And they said, no. I used to. Oh, when did you quit? This morning, just before I got admitted. You know, <laughs> when you're in a crisis, you change your life drastically, right? Mm -hmm. So a crisis changes the balance of risk and reward. Now, what's the reason David didn't embrace online training as much as till today? Because the risk was too great. I it didn't have time for it. It was just, I don't want to flop. Well, guess what? You're going to sink or swim now, son, because you got to do it. Mm -hmm. And that's so you do it. A, a crisis increases our focus. Cr a crisis actually helps us focus our attention on things that really matter. Family. Friends. Faith. Oh, and yes, work. But it's just it's, a crisis really helps us drill down on these things. Um, and then you need to lead your way out of a crisis. You, you're not going to, your team, you and your team will not find their way out of a crisis without a leader. So you just might as well pick up the mantle because remember, you have been brought to this position 
this in this time for such a time as this. A couple more things about perspective, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna lead with our our final thought. People have heard me say this. You've heard me say this. It's not mine. It's it's John's. Everything worthwhile is uphill. You want to get in shape, walk uphill. You know, you want to learn something, it takes effort. You know, you don't just you don't you don't experience, you don't learn great things through just osmosis. It takes effort. Um too often we have uphill hopes and downhill habits. <laughs> so, you know, we've talked about and that's what I loved about your example at the beginning. You got up this morning, you went through your normal routine. So you were ready to embrace the day by 7.30, which to me is amazing with a family, two little girls and all of those things. We, you know, with both you and your husband working from home and no daycare, I, I don't know how you do it. The only person I had to worry about was me. So that's easy for me to say do that every day. <laughs> um, crisis never leaves you the same. After 9-11, everything changed. And you know what? After COVID-19, things are going to change. Mm -hmm. uh, I've I've heard people say we may never be able to go back to stadiums filled with people the way we used to. That's possible. That's not a good or a bad thing. It's just it is. It it becomes reality. I'm hoping we can, but who knows? Um, things will never go back to normal the way we once knew it. Uh, normal is gone, and you need to embrace that. It's it becomes a new normal. You know, what, what, what is normal for me today is now my new normal. Let's figure out how to, what can I do best in that new normal. Um, and then move to how do I make positive changes. So, you know, those are kind of the key things. It's just embrace this, walk in it. How do I, you know, how can it make me better? How can I use this to help others? Remember that in the center of the difficulty is where the opportunity lies. And then my last thought here was, you know, what do we talk about next week? Um, when things get out of control, leaders help people regain control for themselves. So that's kind of what I want to focus on next week is how do I help my team now or others or my peers or my family regain their bearing, their control for their life? so that the team can really focus or the family can really focus or the community can really focus and move forward in, in, in a positive way. So how's that? That's great. And I'm already looking forward to next week. So, um, are there any things that this is something, so not, this is like whenever you, when David pauses, Marissa takes a deep breath because who knows <laughs> what he's going to say next. So, are there any things that you and your family are doing special since you're uh, sort of being, well, not, not quarantine, but you know, living I, in COVID nineteen? Isla and I, and Lena is so young; she doesn't really understand. And even Isla is so young. But um, Isla and I, I, like, I couldn't take the kids' shows anymore. She doesn't watch a ton sure. of TV, but when she does, it's obviously children's programming but we yep. found a show on hgtv that we both mm. enjoy <laughs> awesome so when uh we usually spend a half an hour watching that before bed or or sometimes we do what, what she calls mommy school which is our new um, homeschool routine wonderful um but you know we've been like i said the weather's breaking we're getting outside a little bit more um good so good. we're we're in good shape that's great. You know, one of the things that I think is such a tremendous positive, of course, I can say that because I don't have any kids that I'm, but, you know, the, the kids that are doing a lot of homeschooling right now, mm -hmm. you know, it just, to me, it just is, I see so many great posts. Um, and then one, I shared this with you before we started, but I'll share it with all of our listeners. So this morning, my daughter, Bethany, sends me a video of my granddaughter, Lily, and there must be something that Lily doesn't like to have to do for school. Lily, I think, is five. Um, I think she's five. She's in kindergarten. And um, so my daughter the, starts the video, and, and it says, So, Lily, what did you do first this morning? And I forgot what it was that Lily said. And she goes, And why did you do that first? And Lily said, Because I had to eat my frog first. <laughs> she's probably the youngest podcast listener that we have because 
She knew enough to eat her ugly frog mm-hmm. first. She's a smart cookie. So those are cute things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those are great things that, you know what? I never would have heard Lily say that mm-hmm. if there wasn't the COVID-19 virus going through our country. Very true. So it, we all have been brought to this place for such a time as this. So with that, I'm Dave Freund. I'm Marissa Norcross. And this was The Next Page. <laughs>